now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 606 O'Connor and Company chugging along here on this Friday morning in your nation's capital. Let's finish this week strong and send you right into the weekend with sunny skies and beautiful weather. And not today, but the weekend. Coming up at 635, Caroline Glick out of uh, Israel will give us her perspective on Chuck Schumer abandoning any support for that nation. 705 Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin right here. It's 735 William Bach, lawyer for Riley Gaines, suing the NCAA. 815 Ian Pryor, out of Loudoun County, to tell you about how that school, school board is trying to kill transparency and truth. And then at 835, Brett Bear, Fox News Channel. I'm Larry O'Connor. That's Patrice Onwuka. Hey, happy St. Patty's Friday. It is. I, I, I don't know why it's St. Patrick's Day is like snuck up on me. It did. It'll, it'll be a fun so Larry, Sunday. I didn't finish telling you that my oh. Irish heritage, remember, my island, Montserrat, it was colonized by the British, but they brought Irish to settle it. So our last names, our towns, everything has Irish. And we we have massive Irish Day, uh, St. Patrick's Day celebrations. It's really, so I, I have some I green in me. Yeah, Let's go. I'm wearing green today. Why don't we head down? Let's just do our St. Patrick's Day in the Caribbean. Hey, you know what? That's Let's not bad, do... except we have a volcano. That's the only thing ah, about the island. That's, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Let's just do every day in the Caribbean if we could. All right. Uh, it was uh, announced early this week that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. intends to make an announcement about who his running mate would be in the, his upcoming independent candidacy for the presidency. Uh, later this month, like within the next 10 days, he's planning mm. on making an announcement. In fact, there's some suggestion that he will make the announcement in the Bay Area of California, which... Hmm. Some sleuth sayers say it might be a hint as to who that running mate might be. He yeah. said that, uh, and his campaign confirmed to the Hill, that Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. the quarterback, current quarterback of the New York Jets, hmm. and outspoken opponent of the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, as well as former Minnesota governor and professional res- wrestler Jesse Ventura, mm. are kind of at Kennedy's uh, top of Kennedy's list. And, of course, Aaron Rodgers yeah. attended the University of California, Berkeley, right Ooh. there in the Bay Area. He also, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., appeared on Fox News at Night with Trace Gallagher this week and was praising Aaron Rodgers. And at one point, <clears throat> he said he was a critical thinker. He said, I like his character. I think we need that at this time. And he went on to say, uh, uh, here, let me read it. You know, he's 40 years old. He's focused Mm -hmm. on his own health. He's very aware of health issues. And, you know, that's one of the things I'm going to – that's one of the key parts of my agenda to get the country healthy again. And he said, he's somebody who I think will help me get the country healthy again. Interesting. Will help me. That just sounds like – that. that's a bit of a slip there, I think. Not he could help me. He will help me, meaning he is the choice. Although that could also apply to a cabinet position. Okay. Right. That's true, HHS secretary. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh, here's a little bit of uh, RFK Jr. singing the praises of Aaron Rodgers. I really like Aaron because, you know, our appeal is to young people. We're trying to make sure that young people are are, are participating in the political process that they have hope for America, and we want somebody young who's going to look out for that generation. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers is battle tested. He's uh, he's stood up. He's been hammered by the press. All right, so I, it's funny. I when I first saw mm-hmm. this and I heard that. Let me go back for a second. Okay. I have always said that the RFK Jr. independent candidacy hurts Joe Biden. It does. And I think it, it makes a nary a dent in Trump's support in the yeah. states where he needs it. But Biden can't afford to lose Democrats who are looking for something new, something different, and mm-hmm. like what they hear from Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I mm-hmm. think I've always thought that. Then when I heard this announcement, I thought, ooh, hold on, Aaron Rodgers. There's a, a very large group of of 20-something Zoomer young men mm. who love Aaron Rodgers. They mm. love his combative style. They love his independent thinking. Mm-hmm. They also, Aaron Rodgers, beyond just football, is a regular on the Pat McAfee 
YouTube podcast uh. that is owned by NCAA. Pat McAfee is phenomenally popular. Mm-hmm. If you've never heard of him, uh, it's that proves that he's more popular with young people than mm-hmm. with anyone listening right now. Um, and that, there's a that that and it's a very independent minded sort of YouTube. I mm. get my news from social media kind of people. Now, yeah. if they followed Aaron Rodgers to the RFK mm-hmm. ticket, that could actually hurt, hurt Donald Trump, Trump theoretically, because mm. I think naturally those people would normally be Trump voters. So I heard this story and I thought to myself, Patrice, oh, gosh, that could actually make a dent. That could make a difference for Trump. Mm. But then this happened. CNN, Jake Tapper, listen to this report. Aaron Rodgers, you might remember we reported on the unhinged conspiracy theories that New York Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers has shared in private that the 2012 very real Sandy Hook school shooting was not real. That it- That's right. And, and let me just, because uh, I did, thought this was the original report. The original report from Jake Tapper basically said, listen, um, one of our journalists was at the Kentucky Derby 10 years ago, saw Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers started talking about these conspiracy theories about Sandy Hook 10 years ago. And they didn't say anything about it, Patrice. They, they hmm. never mentioned it. They never reported it. It was Pamela Brown, by the way, was the CNN oh, okay. reporter. Okay. Pamela Brown was not part of the segment, didn't say anything. Just Jake Tepper hmm. was reporting it. Literally hearsay wow. gossip. The only record of this so-called Sandy Hook conspiracy theory is a CNN reporter saying, yep, he told me I heard it. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, of course, d- denied it, and I will play that for you in a second. Um, but, but So CNN suddenly does this big blockbuster mm. breaking story, which is not rooted in any sort of journalistic standards in any way mm-hmm. whatsoever, mm-hmm. Uh, and throws up. And think about it. At the, at the time, they didn't report it. At the time when... Uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers was questioning the truth behind the COVID-19 vaccine and they were calling him a vaccine conspiracy theorist. You would think that would have been an opportune time to report this story. Oh, not only is he a conspiracy theorist about that, but he's a conspiracy theorist Mm -hmm. about this. But no, now, now they decide to report this. And that tells me that Biden and the Democrats and the media, they're more worried about Aaron Rodgers and RFK Jr. Mm. than Trump is. So the fact that they put this bogus story Mm -hmm. out here that Aaron Rodgers Mm -hmm. completely denies, that tells me that maybe, maybe this whole thing, if it happens, will end up hurting Biden more than Trump. Well, it doesn't take much. If you just Google Aaron Rodgers and see and look at the news tab to see all of the hit pieces coming out against him uh, about things that he's said in the past, um, (laughs) Salon, RFK Jr. and Aaron Rodgers illustrate how con artists exploit male insecurity. That tells you that you're you're, you're hitting on something, that they are hitting young men who uh, they call con artists, uh, but young men who are following behind leaders strong male uh male independent thinking uh people uh and so they're they're worried about losing that demographic i i absolutely do think that um Mm -hmm. (laughs) that that this is this is hitting at something will it be aaron Rodgers? i mean i'd be curious we've certainly seen plenty of of former athletes move into politics and do extremely well um you know that that said this is a third party candidacy. Um, I do hope that it could that it would undercut uh, Biden more than it would undercut President Trump. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I do also think that when you, you when you look at the polling, it, even even if he puts Roger RFK puts Rogers on the ticket, it's not going to be enough to to be a, a, a huge factor unless he's hitting like those Ross well, Perot numbers. That's, there there that's have been recent polling. Recent polling shows that uh, if if RFK Jr. maintains his numbers right now, yeah, uh, Biden loses Arizona, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. Mm. And that that is a major factor. Uh, literally, mm. there is only one person on the planet who allegedly heard Aaron Rodgers say this, and that's Pamela Brown. And she said nothing about it until right now. It is it is the most insane and and, and one other weird. thing not for nothing not for nothing mm-hmm. and i listen mm-hmm. of course i don't believe the sandy hook conspiracy stuff and the alex jones stuff but let me just say mm-hmm. all of the things that they said aaron jones aaron Rodgers was lying about about covid 19 yeah. about natural immunity when he said i have natural immunity so i'm mm-hmm. not going to get the vaccine because the vaccine has been untested which is a hundred percent the scientific approach to this, especially if you're a young, healthy, professional athlete. Exactly. In the when of your he life. said that, they called him a conspiracy theorist, Patrice. Yeah. 
and he was 100% truthful and accurate. And one last thing. For Jake Tapper, the man who brought us the steel dossier and (laughs) Russian prostitutes urinating on a bed for Donald Trump, all the lies about the steel dossier and Russian conspiracy, for him to tut-tut and take the moral high ground about a conspiracy theory is the most despicable despicable, outrageous, and laughable <laughs> thing that I have seen ever. We, on, he's the last real journalist left, which tells you exactly the state of journalism Yikes. in America. <laughs> 617. WMAL. Making sense of the news. Live. From the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. Upgrade to a new walk-in shower from Long Baths. Call now to get your free estimate today. When she has stars in her eyes, call Mervis Diamond Importers. Her dream diamond is at Mervis. WMAL's Free Speech Forum is back Sunday, June 2nd at the Birchmere. Details online now at WMAL.com slash Free Speech Forum. Today, Aaron Rodgers is responding to our story, kind of. He does not deny saying what we reported he said. Yeah, uh, in his statement, of course, said, you know, I've always... Uh, this is a story I cared about. Uh, actually, here, I'll, I'll just read his statement instead of paraphrasing it. Come on, Larry. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, as I'm on the record saying in the past, what happened in Sandy Hook was an absolute tragedy. I'm not and have never been of the opinion that the events did not take place. Again, I hope that we learn from this and other tragedies to identify the signs that will allow us to prevent unnecessary loss of life. My thoughts and prayers continue to remain with the families affected, along with the entire Sandy Hook community. Uh, and, of course, as Jake Tapper points out. You know, if you read that, statement rogers does not deny those comments that he made to pamela brown and to the other source oh that smug little Mm. chuckle of his is unbelievable um here is here is aaron rogers in 2012 after the sandy hook shooting but from lawmakers to celebrities the whole country really is talking about the people and what happened in newtown yeah and aaron rogers getting in on that as well today he shares what he hopes will come from this tragedy I hope that we can learn from this and look for the signs more and, and not ever have something like this happen and, and keep this on our minds because these are things that um, affect all of us directly or indirectly. And um, this needs to be something that we learn from. Can I just once again point out hmm. that th- this is a ridiculous story? It truly is a ridiculous story. It's made up, it's and fabricated. CNN still has Van Jones regularly on their program. Van, if we if yeah. we really want to play this game, Van Jones signed a petition on behalf of 9/11 truthers. Oh okay? wow! So and, wow. and, they, and they, right that's that's just documented fact. Um, and and again, I go back to CNN, Anderson Cooper, Jim Acosta, uh, Jake Tapper, mm. Chris Cuomo, Don Lemon. Relentless ongoing coverage of the Russian Russian conspiracy lie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That 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 is the hallmark of American journalism today. Uh, Aaron, Aaron it, again, I'm not defending Aaron Rodgers. I have no idea what he said. The hypocrisy here of mm-hmm. them doing this, and you know, it's because they got a phone call. They got a phone call, mm-hmm. and they said, "Listen, Aaron Rodgers has to be destroyed." He needs to get Let's ahead do of it. this. Yep. Let's do it. I, I'm literally just look perusing some of these headlines. Um, let's see, RF, CNN RFK's VP prospect Aaron Rodgers shared false Sandy Hook conspiracy theory see the the fact that they are referring to him as rfp rf uh, rfk jr's vp prospect that's really what this is about yeah. if, if if this allegation had just surfaced today it wouldn't have been a headline at best maybe espn might have run it and espn's headline jets aaron's roger sandy hook was an absolute tragedy that's actually what espn is running which is what which is what aaron rogers actually said you know, so this is, uh, you know, this is absolutely media spin, and they're trying to destroy someone before they can become a candidate, if, if he is going right. to be a candidate on the show. By, by the way, I don't think he is. I'd, I'd love to hear what New York Jets fans have to say about this. Those poor fans, <laughs> they've been through enough. Uh, and I don't want RFK Jr. anywhere near the White House. I've said that over <laughs> and over again. I think he's a left-wing Democrat. He yeah, is. a lot he of just, his policies we would not agree up with. Up until two months ago. This isn't about them. This is about journalism, CNN, Jake Tapper, and their brand continuing to go down the toilet. About a year ago, Aaron Rodgers appeared on Bill Maher's podcast, his one-on-one mm. podcast, and he said, uh, Maher said, you know, what do you think of Trump? And, and Aaron Rodgers said, yeah, this whole January 6th thing and the 2020 election, at some point he's just got to man up. Take the loss, man. Stop, stop talking about how you were robbed and tell us what you're going to do. He was very critical of Donald Trump. 
Mm. And that would have been a great moment for Jake Tapper to report on Aaron Rodgers being critical of Donald Trump and saying, however, you know, Aaron Rodgers shouldn't be trusted because we have this story about him being a denier. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mm -hmm. you see, but at that moment, he actually served Jake Tapper's purposes because he was critical of Donald Trump. Now he's an impediment to the party, so he Mm -hmm. has to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. It's 623. Now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 637 O'Connor and Company here in your nation's capital. Thanks for tuning in. Real fast, I want to give you a rundown of who's joining us as the morning develops. 705, we'll speak with the governor of Virginia, Glenn Youngkin. I certainly want him to react to what Chuck Schumer did to the state of Israel yesterday on the Senate floor. 735, William Bach is representing Riley Gaines in that lawsuit against the NCAA over gender policies. 815, Ian Pryor out in Loudoun County. And then at 835, Brett Baer, Fox News Channel. It's Larry O'Connor with Patrice Anwuka. That's a loaded day there, Patrice, isn't it? And it's uh, even more loaded with our next guest. Uh, I just alluded to what Chuck Schumer said on the floor of the Senate, but let's uh, let's remind everybody quickly. As a lifelong supporter of Israel, uh-huh. it has become clear to me the Netanyahu coalition no longer fits the needs of Israel after October 7th. Yeah, because uh, he's standing in the way of a two-state solution. Because, you know, the best response to the massacre of October 7th is to give the terrorists exactly what they want. I'm so disgusted by this and embarrassed, by the way, that he is a leader in this country, certainly out of my party. Caroline Glick is the senior contributing editor at Jewish News Syndicate, host of the Caroline Glick Show, and also a columnist at Newsweek. Uh, Her book, by the way, The Israel Solution, One State Plan for Peace in the Middle East. Caroline, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me on your program, Larry and Patrice. I I hope your countrymen and women know that Chuck Schumer does not represent us or what we believe and uh, how we stand behind the people of Israel and the state of Israel. And by the way, this coming at the heels of a vote in the Knesset, you know, earlier this month, it was something like 99 to 9 or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Caroline, please Mm -hmm. expand on this and what's going on here. Well, yeah, but uh, that it's interesting because a couple of weeks ago, 99 out of 120 members of Knesset, opposed by nine members of Knesset, the others didn't vote, uh, passed a resolution saying that Israel opposes any attempts from international forces to dictate an outcome relating to the Palestinian um, conflict with Israel. And that was directed... Uh, precisely against uh, statements that were coming out of the White House indicating that the Biden administration was about to unilaterally recognize a Palestinian state without anything being negotiated between Israel and the Palestinians, without Israel agreeing to anything at a time when the Palestinians are waging a war to annihilate Israel uh, in Gaza that is wildly supported by the Palestinians in Judea and Samaria, who are led by the ostensible moderates in Palestinian society, the Palestinian Authority that receives money and weapons uh, and other goodies from uh, U.S. taxpayers, uh, courtesy of the Biden administration. So, you know, Israelis, three quarters to 85 percent of Israelis, depending on the poll you're looking at, oppose Palestinian statehood precisely because of what you said, Larry, that we understand that A, the Palestinians don't want a state, they want ours and they want to kill us all, and B, I mean, and B, why would you start talking about giving them a payoff after they committed a one-day genocide against Jews that was <clears throat> more sadistic and vicious than, uh, honestly, than what the Nazis did? They didn't shoot their victims multiple times be- while killing them. They didn't torture them. They didn't, you know, they didn't commit the atrocities that Hamas uh, uh, carried out. They just killed us all. They didn't. They didn't want to film it all they tried to hide what they were doing yeah well and caroline um it's been ironic to hear the international community's silence on what's happened to women uh we talked about this at iwl oh patrice i'm so sorry we we have some problem with your connection so we're gonna have to reset that because we're not hearing your mic um, in the meantime, I think what she was getting at was here, this is, I mean, Chuck Schumer and the Democratic Party, I know you're familiar with their uh, uh, positions here in America. They try to be, they've always said that they're the champion of the Jewish American vote and also of right. women's vote. The, as Patrice was saying, this is a direct assault on women considering 
uh, how they have been tr- raped and tortured and continue to be. Let's not forget that mm-hmm. Americans and Israelis are being held and sexually assaulted as we speak by these terrorists. Right, exactly. And, and you know, it, it's even, I mean, just to add insult to injury, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Congress, uh, uh, a bunch of members of Congress uh, uh, issued a draft resolution uh, condemning sexual violence that uh, Israelis are carrying out against Palestinians, in addition to, you know, what the Palestinians may or may not have done to Jewish women. And one of the signatories on this thing is Adam Schiff. You know, it was another uh, uh, Jewish Democratic lawmaker who claims to protect the interests of Jewish Americans. But what he, just like Schumer, are doing, both of them, uh, Mm -hmm. is protecting the interests, advancing the interests of of Nazis, of Mm -hmm. Hamas, of Hamas genocidal terrorists who invaded Israel with a division-level force and and seized territory and Mm -hmm. used that control in order to commit a slaughter the likes of which nobody ever experienced or imagined. So, you know, here he is saying, make make Israel oust its prime minister. By the way, his Mm -hmm. policies are supported but almost unanimously across Israeli society. He himself is leading his leading uh, competitor for the premiership by 10 points, according to a poll that came out this week, and the Likud and the right religious coalition that the, that the Biden administration so wants to oust is also, uh, you know, in, 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 a, in a poll that, you know, have assigned seats to Israel's parliament, we see that they have a majority still. You know, the majority of Israelis want them to remain in office. It's, it's well, amazing. He- Caroline, that was going to be my follow-up question. I mean, it it seems unprecedented that Chuck Schumer, who would be advocating for international interference into a a democracy's electoral process to to, to change the outcome in, in, in one particular direction or another, I'm pretty sure that's what they railed against, you know, in 2016. Uh, so uh, what what is your take on just his calling for and others calling for, um, you know, a, a certain electoral interference by the United States into um, Israel's uh, political process? Well, I, I think that it's it's obnoxious and it's also saying that today the Democratic Party, including the White House, including Vice President Kamala Harris, are, are saying that they view the Netanyahu government as a strategic enemy of the United States, because who, what kind of governments do you want to oust from power, right? They want to oust Putin from power. Putin is, an, is a U.S. enemy. Israel and Prime Minister Netanyahu are, are America's strongest allies in the Middle East. Yep. And here they are saying that our strategic aim is to oust Netanyahu, treat Israel as an American colony, essentially, second-guess everything it does in the war in order to protect Hamas from eradication. Why is the United States siding with Hamas in this war? Why is Chuck Schumer siding with Hamas in this war? I mean, it's like everybody just lost their marbles. What do they think is going to happen to the United States and its position in the Middle East and its national security if if Hamas, which is an Iranian proxy, wins? And at the same time that they're saying this, they're giving Iran $10 billion in sanctions relief, which is just amazing. So that the Biden administration is effectively siding with Iran and Hamas against Israel here. Caroline Glick is our guest. And Caroline, um, we've had you on to talk about the, uh, let's call it the, um, well, Israeli politics can be a bit of a basket case, not when it can. <laughs> the coalitions that have to be built to have a majority, even the slimmest of majorities in the Knesset, oftentimes uh, look relatively schizophrenic. You've also lived through, you know, the intifada, multiple intifadas. You've lived through the mm-hmm. Yasser Arafat gaining power in uh, the so-called Palestinian territories, him rejecting the peace plan in the mid-90s, because, of course, they don't want peace. They want to eradicate the Israeli state. You've seen all of that. I I wonder if you could just give us your impression of where the people of Israel, given all of that and given all of the various domestic divisions that the people of Israel still have politically, but what October 7th did to galvanize and sort of refocus the real purpose of that nation? Look, uh, people call October 7th a terrorist attack, but, you know, as as West Point professor and urban war specialist uh, John Spencer said in a conversation with me on my podcast this week, it wasn't a terrorist attack. It was a full-scale, division-sized invasion of Israel, and in that invasion, which was accompanied by a massive cyber attack against Israeli first responders and critical infrastructure, and 
a, a missile a avalanche of missiles of 5,000 missiles that were that Hamas uh, uh, shot at Israel that day. Um, they seized villages, they seized kibbutzim, they seized military bases, and they used their uh, control over those areas to engage in acts of slaughter and crimes against humanity, the likes of which we never imagined. But they are a massive army. They are the strongest defended. They have the strongest defensive positions of any army in history. They're burrowed in 400 miles of underground tunnels. And they are politically powerful the, like nobody imagined they could ever be because of what they did on October 7th throughout the Muslim world. And you see it among American Muslims and progressives who are siding with Hamas and jubilant in what they did on October 7th. And that's throughout the Western world as well. So you you had this thing that happened to Israel. And Israelis recognized that, wait a minute, oh my God, all the things that you know, people like Carolyn has been warning us about for 30 years, you know, that they're teaching their children to become suicide bombers, that they're indoctrinating their children in genocide, that this is what they're organizing themselves around. And we always thought, oh, it's okay, we can give them land and they'll be appeased, we can give them money and they'll be happy, Mm -hmm. they'll get mortgages and they'll moderate. We were wrong, they won't. They are, you get out what you put in. You tell a society that its goal is to annihilate the Jewish people, and lo and behold, when given the opportunity, that's what they go about doing. And when that happened, it was it wasn't Israel is fighting a war for its survival. That's it, overwhelmingly Israelis recognize this. Overwhelmingly Israelis recognize we can't fight to a draw. There's yeah. no way to allow Hamas to survive after what they did to us because if they survive. We won't long survive. It invites yeah. aggression from all of Iran's other proxies and from Iran itself, which is on the doorstep right. of nuclear ca- nuclear capabilities. That's right. So That's Israelis, right. so for the first time in a long time, our political situation is actually fairly stable, contrary to what Biden and Schumer would have you believe. Israelis don't want elections, until, at least until after the war is over, yeah. and Israelis are unified. Over 90 percent say that Hamas has to be eradicated with the understanding that this isn't a fight to a draw. This is a fight for absolute victory, which is precisely what Prime Minister Netanyahu says a hundred times a day, because everybody recognizes this. Our soldiers have fought so valiantly and brilliantly. They've done things nobody ever thought could be accomplished ever. And here are the Americans who are supposed to be our allies saying, you're not allowed to win. You have to let Hamas survive. And then you have to let them form a unity government with a PLO, both both factions of which are completely dedicated to your annihilation. And if you don't do that, we're not going to arm you. We're going to we're going to condemn you at the UN Security Council. And you get Chuck Schumer calling for regime change in an allied democracy. Yeah. So I mean, something that something he's never called for in Gaza, something he's never called for in Iran. Even uh, we got to leave it there. Sadly, Caroline Glick. Yeah. But but please, we are your ally. There was a time when American leadership of both parties recognized exactly uh, where our obligations and our loyalty is in that region. And I pray for a time where we will get back to that sanity. Uh, If the Democrat Party can't figure that out, well, then the Republican Party will certainly fill that void. Caroline, thanks for joining us. And uh, give our best, please, to your countrymen. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And we trust in the American people's support for Israel, and, and we bank on it. So thank you very much. 